Good morning. Hi. Um, I think my car needs a tune-up. It was a fine scheme, but I'm gonna have to run to work, so I'm gonna come back about five. All right, we'll have it ready for you at five. And I have to have it back tonight because my son has a science fair to go to. No problem. Okay. Hi, I need a 50,000 mile checkup. I'm in a big hurry, so, but I would like to get it back tonight if possible. The keys are in the car if you could take care of it, please. We'll take care of it for you. There's absolutely no problem. I'll check it. You just wait in the waiting room over to the right. All right. Here's your bill. $620? You must be kidding. This has to be a mistake. But didn't you say that? Hi, am I a super ready? Oh, yeah. It's not fixed yet. It'll be another hour or two. It's not fixed yet. I said I needed Sarah, it by 5 o'clock. take all day? I've been waiting here since this morning. You said you'd get it fixed while I was waiting. Her this is ridiculous. Car. I've been, I've been waiting in the lobby. Two bucks. That's crazy. Why don't you give me a call? Excuse me, sir. I'm here to pick up my car. Uh, parts. Which one is it? The white one with the hood up. Hey Joe, would you come, would you explain to the lady here the, about the white Plymouth the problem? Have you ever been cornered by clients who feel like they've been misinformed or misunderstood? Keeping customers satisfied isn't always easy, but sound business practices can help things run more smoothly. Practices like keeping the customer informed doing only the work that's been authorized, and by maintaining a written record of all jobs that come into your shop. These good business practices have been incorporated into the Automotive Repair Act. It was written to benefit both the consumer and the auto repair industry. By following the regulations of the Repair Act, you'll be keeping accurate records of all the work you do, and you'll be improving communications with your customers. If a problem should arise, you will be able to protect yourself more adequately from customer complaints. This program will explain how to comply with some of the requirements of the Automotive Repair Act. We'll focus our attention on three different types of transactions, parts and labor, itemize, and teardown. Say, you got a minute to come look at this? My car's leaking water. Now, I took it over to my neighbor. He's real good with cars. He says my bottom radiator hose is leaking. Are you listening to me? He says my bottom radiator hose is leaking. Hmm. Could you replace it? See, it's leaking right there. I think your water pump bearing is shot. Now, take a look at the movement here in the fan assembly. Oh. And all the coolant running out. Jeez. I'd say you have a combination of problems. Yeah. What I'd like to do is put a new water pump in your car, then pressure test the cooling system to make sure everything else is up to par. How much is that going to run me? Uh, let me look it up. Uh, let's see, that's uh, two hours later at 38 an hour. And plus uh, 71.50 for the rebuilt part. Comes to a total of uh, one forty-seven fifty plus tax. Now, I might find something else wrong with the system after I do the pressure check, but I'll give you a call if I need to revise the estimate. Okay, go ahead with it. The keys are in the car. Now here's my card. I gotta go. My ride's waiting. Hey, wait! I can't do any work without your signature on the estimate. Okay, okay. Where do I sign? I gotta fill it out first. It'll just take a minute. Okay, your name is uh, George McNeil. Yeah. Your home address is 35. The work order is your contract with a customer for a specific job. Most of the information on the invoice is required by law. 39,425. License number. You here. must have your customer's authorization to go ahead with the work, or he is not legally bound to pay you. All righty, if you could just sign right there, please. Your customer must receive a copy of any document he signs immediately after he signs it. Here's your copy of the estimate. I'll give you a call in a couple of hours. Yeah, okay. Sometimes you'll find that a car needs additional work, which will cost more than the original estimate. 
Since your customer is legally required to pay only the amount on the estimate, you must get additional authorization from him before you begin the additional work. Hello, is George McNeil there? No, he's not. This is his son. Can I help you? No, I have to speak with him directly. Uh, do you have any idea when he might be in? Well, Remember, your customer the is the person who signed the repair order. Hey, wait a minute. Here he is. He just walked in. Dad, the guy from the garage is on the phone. Hello? Uh, hi, this is Ralph at the garage. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, we replaced your water pump, and we pressured your cooling system, but we found that all three of your fan belts were worn and cracked. They'll have to be replaced, and that'll run you another $2,250. Uh, that takes your total bill up to $170. Is that okay? $170. Yeah, sure. Go, go ahead. Go ahead and replace them. When you receive additional authorization, It'll you must record today. the information on your invoice. This specific okay. notation is required by law and may protect you in case of a misunderstanding. Spoke with George McNeil. The date, the time, phone number I called. The additional cost, the additional work. and the total revised estimate. Hello. Oh, evening. She's all ready for you, Mr. McNeil. Oh, great. As we discussed, we put in a new water pump, pressure tested the cooling system, and installed all three fan belts. So your parts came to $94, labor is 76, and your total is 170, plus 564 tax, and that brings your total to 175.64. I'm sure glad you got it out on time. Thank you. We've got a wedding to go to tonight, and my wife would be real upset if we don't get down to Lodi in time for her to see your sister marry this bum. <laughs> there are times when a customer can't be there to sign the work order. Before any work is done, you must contact the customer for authorization. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Porter. Yes? Yeah, this is Greg from Downtown Automotive. Oh? I got your note about your tan Honda. You say it's hard to start. Have you noticed any other problems? There's just no power. I don't know, maybe it needs to tune up. I haven't had one done for a couple years. Okay, well, what I want to do is put your car on the, uh, the ignition analyzer and check it out and find all the problems, and then I'll give you a call back, and we can go from there. Gosh, how much will that be? Oh, it's, it's going to cost $20 for the diagnosis. You mean it's going to cost me $20 just to find out what's wrong with my car? Be sure your customer understands that your estimate is for a specific job. Okay, go ahead with it. Make complete notations when your customer gives you authorization. Name, date, time, phone number you called, and the specific job description and cost. Well, we've done the diagnosis, and here's what your car needs. You need another distributor cap, and that's going to run $17. And another An rotor. itemized estimate includes a list of all the parts to be replaced and all the labor to be performed. Okay, so your parts come to a total of $84. Your labor is uh, 110 for a total of $194. Plus tax. Well, if it'll fix all my car's problems. Well, it'll correct the problems you complained about. Okay, go ahead with it. If there are any changes to the original itemized estimate, then you must contact your customer again and get their okay. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Porter. This is Greg at Downtown Auto. Well, while I was working on your car, I found that um, your power steering hose had a leak in it. Yeah, it's going to cost $35 parts and $28 labor to replace it. Are you sure it needs it? Well, yeah, it's leaking pretty bad and it might make your car hard to steer. All right, go ahead and replace it. Okay. Okay, so that brings your total to $119 parts, 
$138 for your labor for a total of $257 plus tax. Okay? Okay. All right, I'll have it ready for you at 4. Mm, that'll be fine. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Again, you must make a notation of the person who authorized the job, the phone number you called, date, time, and the description of the additional work, and any change in price. Okay, and here you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. The final itemized invoice must contain a list of all the installed parts with a price for each item. Hi, Jerry. How you doing? Hey, Tom. I'm okay. How about yourself? Okay. What can I do for you? Well, I want you to take a look at my truck here. It's, uh, it's been running pretty rough and smoking a lot, and I uh, was hoping maybe you could get it run decent for me again. How many miles you got on it? Well, it's uh, just over 100,000. Mm-hmm. Well, what I'd like to do is uh, run a diagnosis, run a compression check on it, see what's going on with your truck, and then I can let you know what I find out. Well, how much is that diagnosis going to run me? $40. Okay. All right, why don't you just come in while I fill out some paperwork. All right, Tom. Well, I did the diagnosis, and it doesn't look good. You've got bad compression in four cylinders. While I was running it, I took it up to a little higher RPM, and I heard a bit of a rattle. Yeah, it's been knocking like that, especially in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'd like to do, if you've got the money to put into it, I'd like to tear down your engine and inspect it. It's going to cost $300. And that'll tell us exactly what we need to know to repair it. Any time you disassemble, you must include the cost of reassembly. If you think you can't restore a component to its original condition, give your estimate. The main problem I have right now is that I can't guarantee that I can put the engine back together. There might be something broken that I don't know about. Could be uh, busted valve springs, crank could be worn down. Uh, I need to let you know that in a it might not be practical to put the engine back together. But if everything's okay, we can take the $300 and apply it towards the overhaul price if you decide to go ahead with it. Well, what if I decide that I don't want to overhaul it? You, know, you must tell the customer the maximum time it will take for reassembly if they don't want the repairs done. Well, if you decide you don't want to repair it, I can put the engine back together for you within three days, and that's all covered under the $300 price. Um, what if I want to take it out disassembled? Well, you can take it out disassembled, and I'll only charge you $200. Okay, well, tear it down, and I'm going to head on home, and you can just give me a call there. Okay, Jerry, just about a minute. Let me fill out the paperwork, and then I have to have you sign. Okay, I tore down your engine, and I went all through it, and it looks like there's two ways we can go with this. I can install a brand new engine for $2,300, or I can rebuild your engine for $1,500. Well, what's it going to take to uh, rebuild mine? Well, the overhaul kit costs $450. If that you are going to sublet work, you must include this information on the estimate. Plus, we're looking at some sublet machine work and labor for assembling and installing a new engine and a new water pump. It'll be $1,500. Well, how am I going to know which parts are new and which ones are rebuilt? Advise your customer of new, used, or rebuilt parts at the time you give him your estimate. I've made a list of the parts that come with your rebuilt engine, and I've noted here which parts are new and which parts are rebuilt. Well, what kind of uh, guarantee am I going to get with this? My guarantee covers all work performed in my Make shop. Make sure your customer receives a written copy of the guarantee and understands the provisions. Here's a copy of the guarantee. You can look it over if you'd like. And one of the conditions of the warranty is that I need to check your truck out after a thousand miles. The situations we've depicted today don't cover all of the regulations of the Automotive Repair Act. So for specific information, refer to a copy of the Bureau's laws and regulations. The pamphlet called Write It Right may also be helpful. By keeping your customers informed, doing only the specific work they've authorized, and maintaining a written record of all the work you've completed, you'll be complying with the regulations of the Automotive Repair Act. Fewer 5 o'clock surprises for your customers mean better customer relations. And better customer relations 
mean better business for you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Your shop must have a license to contract for smog checks. They cannot be sublet. So if you're part of a licensed smog check station, stay tuned. Okay, thanks. We'll give you a call about four. Bye-bye. Hi. Hi, I can help you. Yeah, I got this notice from DMV. It says I need some sort of smog certificate before I can renew my registration. Do you do that sort of work? Yes, we do. We're a test and repair station. So if we find a problem with your mission control system, we can do repairs right here. Or you can have the repairs done somewhere else if you'd rather. Now, how much is the certificate going to cost me? Well, the certificate cost is set by the state. We charge you $25 for the inspection. And if your car fails, I'll give you an estimate for the repairs. <laughs> repairs? Now, this isn't going to cost me a whole lot of money, I hope. Well, there's a $50 limit to bring your mission controls into compliance as much as possible. The $50 limit applies only if there isn't any evidence of tampering with your mission control system. No, I, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, well, I just need to fill out some paperwork then, and we'll get started. Okay, let's see. Uh, name is uh, Mike Layton, yeah. and the address is 2003 Spruce. Okay, that's Sacramento. And zip. What's your home phone? Yeah, it's 555 Two four five three. Okay, and your business phone? Five 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 two six one seven. Okay. Okay, now I need you to sign this. In addition to getting written authorization, you must also notify your customer that he can have any necessary repairs or adjustments completed at another facility. There okay. And we'll give you a call when we've done all the tests. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye bye. Mike Layden? Hi, this is Gary Kenner from the Auto Care Garage. I'm afraid your car has some problems. And the air pump and plumbing have been removed, which indicates some tampering. Yeah. Well, what this means is we have to replace the air pump and plumbing before we can deal with the emission problem or issue a certificate. Well, the $50 limit doesn't apply to the tampering. Now, I'd estimate uh, $125 parts plus $75 labor to replace the air pump and plumbing. Now, if there's still an emission problem, the adjustment will be covered under the $50 limit. So the maximum total will be $275, and we'll do the retest for free. Okay, very good. Well, I'll give you a call if we have any further problems. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Mike Layton. I'm here to pick up my car. It's all ready for you, Mr. Layton. Okay, here's your keys. Now, let me go over this with you. It's $25 for the inspection, $75 to install the air pump, $28 to adjust the carburetor, $5 for the certificate, $125 for the air pump and the listed plumbing, and your total is $266.50. So, uh, Alrighty. here's your certificate. Here's your, uh, your test report, and here's your receipt. Now you just go ahead and you take this uh, certificate in. It's good for 90 days. And you can either see that in with your registration and your money. So All thank right. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.